Yeah. The last bronze cord, even though it's on top. Yeah. The bronze, you're getting it all in one shot. So you have no porosity, no overlap, no cold shut, what they call when the bronze comes together, but isn't quite hot enough to fuse. That's cold shut. And here we welcome that to a point. Because you want to be able to bend that in and then come out so you don't scrape all the detail off the side of that mold. You mean that you then go horizontal to you? Or yeah. You I changed the pattern. I'm going like this. Okay. More or less just to keep me from going crazy. Now, if you camp too long, that chemical reaction is going to start to harden and then you're breaking the bond. Mm -hmm. And then you get a cracked mold and you wonder what happens. That make similar products and they call it everything under the sun. Kim Bond, Petra Bond. You think of any of them? Uh, Nova set, yeah, car Nova set, set, yeah. The list goes on and on. Different colors. If you're into colors, these ones are clear. There's blue ones and purple ones. Um, they all do about the same thing. Some of them I notice the odor and they stain your hands more. Mm -hmm. This is sort of. The color I don't know if it's killing me or not. It's not getting me dirty, at least. Any kind of grinding tool you can get your hands on or your hands, and you can grind this part down a little bit. Uh, to give yourself more room for the metal to flow, oh, yeah. or you could sign some cryptic message in there. Okay, now you take the center blocks away, and basically you have half of your hat done. The uh, I, I was gonna show you the first step with the hat stuck in here. So, hat was on there, as advertised, dirty shirts. <laughs> and that was put in there to keep that hat from collapsing yeah. when I was uh, working on it. I haven't, but I can. If anybody's ever worked with green sand, green sand doesn't have a chemical in it that makes it cure or get hard. It's compaction that makes it stand together. And you got to work in metal flasks or it's not going to work. And the flask is built to hold onto the sand and you're supposed to be real gentle and flip it over without messing it up. This is a lot more forgiving because once your detail's on it and you're done with that piece, it's pretty, pretty uh, yeah. easy to transfer. This is silica sand. Um, I use 70 mesh because it's finer uh, particulates and gets better detail. Uh, and then I'm using two different uh, resins to bond it. And we'll get to see that. If you don't put a release and talc is a good release to sand from one part to the other, they're gonna bond together and stick, and now you just make one part. You don't get your second part as part. So you don't wanna skip the talc phase. You also don't wanna skip the keys. This is gonna put some registration marks in it. So that's funky casting. It's gonna be thicker on one side. Yeah. The mold might be touching on the outside, and then you'll get a, a hole. Baby powder or talc or anything that's uh, like baby powder, I guess. I always use baby powder powders so I can find in the store. And we really want to make sure we get this on the sand mold itself. Now I'm taking a brush and I'm just working. You don't want to leave these little piles because believe it or not, that'll take up space in that mold and that'll make it so it's not a real great fit up. It's a lesser volume of the two mix. So whenever you're, whenever I'm mixing, uh, two-part resins or epoxies or anything and it has this binder like sand in it I like to put the smaller part in first and then make sure you really get that sand coated and then add the part that has a larger volume by part to it and that gives you a lot better mix 
less clumping and less uh, balls of resin. Okay, and then put the sand back over the top. And then you, the hardest parts, clamping it with your legs. The dumping it of the bucket, you want to transfer from this bucket to this bucket, then rather just try to mix it in the one. Because you can see that, lo and behold, there's dry stuff hiding back mm -hmm. down there. So now you can mix that into the thing. And you'll mix that Javon. It's not much fun to work with, in my opinion. The fact that you have to be so gentle with it. I'm not gentle with much, so it wasn't a good mix. He should kind of cast out. So your pattern has to be removable. So that's why Chip uses these urethane or rubber patterns because he can get uh, what's referred to as an undercut, which is anything that you can put your fingers behind and, and the sand will get locked in there. And you're trying to pull that out, it's gonna break if it's a hard pattern. But since there's enough flex in these urethane patterns, he can get away with quite a bit of undercuts and forgiveness in that as you can tell in the piece he cast last night when you're working you got to think about how am i going to get this cast sometimes sand molding is a cheaper option scott can you say you start the foreground first with carving? Not a carving yes yes because it's a process of taking away really? instead of adding and so it's kind of backward but you still get the same effect so you like on a dremel tool you can i'll have like I have one that was a foot pedal, a little bigger motors, not as fast for hogging out bigger areas. I actually can use a roto zip, the big yep. handheld roto zip to cut out big areas. And then I'll move to like say a regular handheld and then I also have a flexible shaft. I actually have like five or six so, set up so I don't have to keep changing collets for different side fits and just makes it easier to keep you know moving along wear a mask if you're carving in sheep for this it's bone you breathe it in over time it doesn't go away it stays in your lungs i know because i've had pneumonia several times and you can get real sick but um, mainly from the bacteria sheep horn has to die to get them you rock the core off and then you've got to clean it out and so there's a lot of bacteria. That's how I got my main pneumonia. Um, so just be careful. I use a dual cartridge mask. Um, better yet would be to have um, an air system that pumps in fresh air. That would be better. I'll grind off the texture so I can do my sketch. You know, so with the carving, this has got a lot of black in it, you can tell, and then there's some lighter colors. So I'll try and go as deep as I need to to keep the back, the black in the background so that the white, lighter colors will be towards the front and you can see it better. Um, you can do that with bighorn. You never know where the dark color is going to be. Doll sheep, you won't get that. Their pigment's light, so they will never have. It's kind of like a horse hoof, see the sheep one. I over-exaggerate a lot of muscle structure and stuff to create shadow so it looks more 3D. You know, the plaster release stuff too. Even though I use a lot of sepia tone, this is a piece of plywood. It's heavy. It's more of a, just a demonstration of what I do on walls. Um, I've gone and done this stuff in businesses and ski resorts and lodges throughout the years. Um, some stuff is on 30 foot walls that are big and big life size scenes. So, but it's all original work. Oh, plastic. There's no foam in here. So, this is pretty heavy. There's armature in this. I put a lot of screws. Yeah. And I also do a plastic bonder onto the plywood. What kind of stuff plaster are you using? I just use a hot mud. Yeah, don't use um, drywall mud. Yeah. It will crack. Okay. Um, yeah, and it holds. And it's a layering thing. Um, I'll do I'll do a skim coat first, and then I just keep going. And then, um, and I carve it when it's wet, not when it's dry. 
forward first and move back with your layers to your background work with other relief stuff that you're adding clay or plaster. I start with the background first. So energized here, they're moving around, they're separating, there's more. As it cools, it comes together, it collapses, locks. So this is already um, solid, but it's now at about 650 degrees. Shoes on, so you can rock this out. I don't want to hit it and land it hard, so very quickly, I'm just going to pop it out, put it down, So now you've got the bear fox. You're doing your metal. It's the same with the patina. I can tell you how to do it. I can give you the Kimmel, the exact everything, but you just gotta, you gotta learn how that metal looks. And you gotta know when you put the, the chemical on there, what it, how it reacts, if it's right. Shiny stuff on there. Short tube pour, so it, it, it should be just on, at a, a quarter inch. That's what the perfect is, you know, or just a little under a quarter inch. And then you just let it set till it cools, and then we're not going to be able to get it out because it's not cool. But what you do is you pop this guy open. This is just an open kind of face one. This is that little face on the, on the chickadee. And then you just kind of squeeze it out and it'll pop out, but we're not gonna, it's not going to happen if it's too hot. We did a lot of trouble, so we stayed we stay with small cores. You gotta start getting big, then they, uh, what they call bubbling. There's a lot of moisture in that core, so what happens is when you pour it in there, all of a sudden it looks good, everything's flowing, all of a sudden it goes boom, big old bubble. And then all of a sudden, all this bronze, it'll have, looks like gunshot wounds through it, and holes, and just does all kinds of nasty stuff, and it's hard to fix. So what I do is I, like, I take, take my colloidal, right? We're gonna look at that in a minute. It's what you make your ceramic shell out of. It's, I call it liquid sand, but it's got a binder and, and sand in it. It's very thin, it looks like milk. And so I'll take that and I'll mix that with plastic Paris, okay? So it's a sand-based uh, silica that I use for my liquid. Then I'm adding some 50-50 mix. I'll take a dry mix, plastic Paris and sand. Uh, we buy from Ransom and Randolph 903. Oh, you make you get pre-made. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Yeah. So I'm old school. You're. <laughs> so he, you can buy it. You know, you can just get boxes of dry. It's kind of green looking. Yeah. Color. Yeah. And it actually probably has fiber in it. it. Yeah, it has all the stuff. Yeah, it has all those little key things, and it's a great way to for you tapping places that you're not going to get into to mar your your bronze. And, and artists walk in, and when you're actually doing this, I'm trying to be nice and yeah. neat, so. That, <laughs> <laughs> you, but you gotta be you gotta know where to hit them in there. You can't just hit the beak and bend it all right. up of course. But... And once he starts fracturing that too, he'll probably go down to that cup where you've got a lot of mass and then you can just give her help and it it'll